Tech Tales 54. It's Thursday morning, June 10th, 7, 10 a.m. Time slip. Well, actually, before I say that, I have a live stream scheduled for this afternoon, 1 p.m. For those of you who are interested with Ken Stout, we'll be talking about the subject or working on the subject of Microsoft licensing entities. I'm a little unclear of the question, but I think it's going to be interesting. It's not activating license. It's a little something else. Anyway, it'll be very useful to have uh, the chat the chat room assistance on this because I think we're going to be doing some research. Then this time slip is for Wednesday, um, May 26, 10 minutes for the consultancy firm Bravo for Kilo. I had her laptop in my office at the time. 9.45 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. located and installed Google Chrome extension to cause email conversations to display in descending order. This one was a surprise for me. She had sent me an email, I think after she delivered the computer to me or shortly before, saying that she, in her Gmail account she has messages grouped uh, conversation in conversations so that when you have multiple emails from a person to and from a person they can be grouped in conversations so they're you, you click on one email and the whole list of sequence of conversations are there and she said that it was sh displaying with the oldest at the top so every time she opened one she had to scroll all the way down to see the most recent message she asked if I could reverse that. I never knew this was an issue. <laughs> so I did some research on it. It turns out that is not only the default for Gmail, but that is the only option natively for Gmail. There is an extension that you can install to reverse the order. And I created a video on it that day because I thought this, this has got to be something that some people care about. If you search the videos in my channel for Gmail. You'll find that and I'll put a link in the description of this video in case you're interested. So that was done deal in 10 minutes. The next one on Wednesday also an hour 35 minutes for the cable components company by the name of Mike for Charlie in that office Took me a moment there to think of the mnemonic for C. Phone and remote connection, trying to recover the email account. And then I named the email account because they have a few of them. After it got locked out, possibly due to incorrect password attempt too many times or, hack <clears throat> or hacker activity. Efforts unsuccessful due to unrecognized security questions and last name and billing zip code. Accessed a, an alternate email account after resetting the password for that alternate email account. Refreshed security questions for that account. Attempted to enter cell phone for recovery. However, it only allowed for AT&T cell phone number. Attempted to enter the first email address as a recovery email However, got message saying the address was already in use. Determined the two accounts are not linked together. We thought they were up to that point. The, mid the, the first account is still successfully forwarding emails to the third account. The first account gave indications of being locked out due to excessive incorrect entries and unlocking efforts failed, determined to try again tomorrow. So in searching for guidance of what to do when, when this account was locked out, one of them was to wait 24 hours. Well, there's going to be some other time slips on this issue. It turned out to be a really big headache. And there's several component, contributing factors to this. It started with an employee of the company who reported that he got locked out of the account and 
reported that he had tried over and over and was getting incorrect password responses until the account got locked out. Now, I don't think he actually had the wrong password because around this time period, over the preceding weeks and months and subsequent weeks and months, I've learned a lot more about this issue. And this is, I've, I've talked about it before, where there's SBC Global and AT&T were kind of rolled into Yahoo. And now the mail is actually serviced and housed by Yahoo, yet AT&T and SBC Global still have their fingers in the pie. And there is a one-time access code that I didn't know... I, yeah, I'd, I had recently learned about it. So when this issue was reported to me, we wound up using this. But there is a one-time access code in the SBC or AT&T admin console for the account that you have to generate that one-time use code and then go to Yahoo and use that instead of the password. So what happens is with Yahoo's increasing security efforts, or it may be SBC Global's or AT&T's, unclear, somehow they got to a point where they required people to generate this one-time access code and essentially made their passwords unusable, unrecognizable, but they did not give a message to that effect. When this employee was trying to enter the password that he knew to be correct, it failed to accept it, and there was no message indicating that he had to go deal with this one-time password issue. So he got the account locked out. Under normal circumstances, that should have been okay we should be able to go to the SBC Global account and generate that code and be able to get into it with the password because the place where the password is being rejected is Yahoo, not SBC Global. So we can log into or should be able to log into SBC Global and generate that one-time access code. Now, a complication here is that they have three different email addresses that are all kind of revolving around the same name. Two of those are hosted by SBC Global. And we thought that one of those accounts was a sub-account of the parent account. Oh, this is, this is just craziness. Eventually, we determined, no, they are separate accounts. However, the recovery email address for each of those two SBC Global accounts is the other account. So, when we do a password recovery, there's so much in this. All right. Let me go back to when we do a password recovery and ask some identity questions. What's your favorite restaurant? What was your school? Those kind of things. We couldn't get them right. So there was like three questions. There was a first question, a second question, and a zip code that the account was registered to. So we make those answers, and then it says fail. We don't know which of those failed. So how long do you try different alternate things? Well, we, we tried for a while. And we were unclear on who set up those accounts because they were set up, I don't know, 20 years ago. <laughs> Before Yahoo was a thing, I'm not sure, but a long time ago. I think, it, I think this was set up back when they were doing dial-up modems for this company. <clears throat> so we were unsuccessful getting in uh, recovering the password for that account and it, it this was an hour and 35 minutes so i've been kind of mixing up some of the following things that that we had done on this account we do wind up finding a rather graceful solution <laughs> i'm not going to try to talk through all of that right now 
this is just setting up this this the, the, we're, we're at the point where we determine this is unsuccessful we're going to try it again tomorrow so the attempt tomorrow will be another time slip and this will be a bit of an ongoing saga uh, and and it's back to the story that I've talked about before how things evolve over time for changes that are made through time and records aren't kept well enough. I was not involved with this office back in 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 those setup times and when I started working with them they didn't have a clear understanding of how all this works. So there's a lot of reverse engineering going on here trying to figure out what happened in the past and what is the current state of these accounts when we can't actually access the accounts in the in the right way. So there's there's more twists and turns in this story coming up, but I'm going to put this episode to bed. So I hope that was useful. Well, all right, whatever. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.